healthy. Now, there are lots of myths and facts around sunscreen, so Trudy is here to clear some of them up in beauty. Good morning, Trudy. Good morning. How are you? I am very well. Sunscreen near and dear to my heart, particularly coming into summer. Me too. First question, uh, SPF 15, 30, 50, what all the numbers mean? You know, it's confusing for people. Really, the simplest thing to remember is that the number represents the amount of time that you can stay out in the sun and be protected. However... In New Zealand, our burn time is really quick. Like high summer, between 11 and 2, it's about 2 or 3 minutes. So yeah. if you've got an SPF 30 and it's a couple of minutes before you get burned, you've really got an hour before you need to reapply. The other thing is that sunscreens, as the numbers increase, it doesn't mean that they're going to give you better protection. It's only a percent. So ah. it starts off at about 96% with a 50 and up to 100 now that you can get, you're only getting 97%. So nothing gives you 100% protection. And this is the thing, isn't it? You go, yeah. oh, it's a higher number, therefore I can stay out all day and not reapply. This and that's right, case. and people do. They get this false sense of security, mm. and then within five minutes, they really are burnt. And of course, it depends on your skin. You mm. know, if you've got very pale skin, you need to go high and cover up, probably. Now, what's the difference between a physical uh, versus a chemical sunscreen? Um, that's been in, in, in the media a lot. Um, the easiest way to remember it is a physical screen is the natural um ingredients in sunscreen, so zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, and that tends to form a barrier over your skin so the sun, sun can't penetrate, essentially right. UVB rays can't penetrate. Whereas a chemical screen, usually you'll look on the label and you'll see oxybenzone or avabenzone, they're the most popular in New Zealand, they absorb the, sun, the sun's rays so that your skin doesn't. Now there's a lot of flack around nanoparticles, which are the tiny particles in sunscreen as well. A lot of dermatologists say to get the absolute protection, you're better to go for something that has a blend of both. Personally, I favor a natural screen. Um, just because I prefer the way it sits on my skin and I just, I mean, I don't lie out in the sun anyway, so I'm just more confident with it, really. Yeah, neither do I, but I am out a lot doing lots of sporting things. Well, that's the thing. You need something with water resistant and a broad spectrum on the label. So well. how much do you apply and how often? Well, nobody applies what the sunscreen doctors or the, the lab rats do in the lab with in vitro um, on human skin. You're supposed to apply two milligrams per centimetre of skin, which is impossible because nobody does that. I mean, a 200 ml bottle would last you a week. One, yeah, exactly. two, three, yeah. Um, the other guide is a teaspoon per limb, but nobody does that either. So what we tend to do is just slap on a bit where we're visible. I mean, I always tell people to put it on about 20 minutes before you go into the sun and actually apply it so you can see it. And that's a really good that's something most people understand. Mm. Um, and putting it on before you go out in the sun is, is really essential because that gives your body time to sort of absorb it and for it to sort of just disperse evenly. And you mentioned broad spectrum. What does that's that mean? very important. That protects you against UVA, UVB, and the latest threat to our skin is the blue rays that we get from our screens. And we're all in front of them all day long. We are in them all the time. Um, You're and right. they pump out UVA rays, which are your ageing rays, not your burning rays. Oh, not those ones. No. So what about um, face body? Do we need different screens for those? I think we do. You know, face screens are a lot lighter in texture. They're often tinted and they have a matte finish. Whereas body screen screens, now that I mean, there are a lot of sprays, which I really like, but they're a lot thicker because they have to cover a wider mm. area, you know, and they have to stick, you know, in terms of being water resistant. And what about acne prone skin? Yeah. It's a real problem, you know, a lot of people really, really struggle with that. I mm. think go, go for the physical screen, you know, that zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, and fragrance free, you know, try and get something fragrance free and paraben free as well, that's the other one. Okay, well what have you brought in for us to have a look at today look, then? Look, I've got quite a few, and some of them start at $20, so there's no excuse to say I can't afford sunscreen, okay. you know, it's my one thing. Um, for the sun. face, really great little natural option from Natio, it's a tinted moisturiser, like, a lot of us don't mm. think about that anymore. So that's hydrating, full of lovely plant extract. It's got a natural mineral tint and an SPF 50. And the thing about that is it blends to any skin type. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, and so you could put that on and then put a bit of concealer on afterwards. Mm, doesn't feel um, crazy either. Spa only, another one from Ultraceuticals, SPF 30 tint. This is an absolute winner. It's one of my faves. Um, again, full of plant extracts. Um, 
The mineral tint is beautiful. It's quite a heavy coverage, so it's great if you like a full coverage foundation. Um, and the other option is you can use a primer. You know, my, another tip of mine is to layer on your sunscreen. A lot of women use an SPF 15 in makeup. Not quite enough for outside. Mm -hmm. So if you lay it on a primer, this is Dermalogica um, Skin Perfect Primer, that's got an SPF 30 in it, and then you can put on your SPF 15 makeup or powder over the top. Feels, so you're doubling up. That feels is, really beautiful yeah, as well. Yeah, which is a good idea. Okay, we move you to the body. I take it? Yeah, well this is actually phase two, but I brought this along because if you are concerned about skin cancer or if you've had a threat, go for something that's available at dermatology um, studio, uh, doctor's rooms. Um, Osmosis, this is a medical MD protector, uh, skin face protector. SPF 30, full of antioxidants, completely natural zinc oxide in that. Okay. Um, the other barrier to sunscreen is people don't like the way it smells, and mm -hmm. this has got to be one of my favourite sprays because it just I'll smells like it coconut, Ooh. and it's milky, it sticks to the skin, water resistant, and natural screens in that too, titanium dioxide. Oh, it smells delicious. Exactly, it so you smell beautiful. like summer wearing that one, and if you're one of those mothers like I was for many years who had to chase your children around the pool and spray them, yes. this is brilliant from Neutrogena. It's got a Helioplex... Um, um, complex in it which actually sta stays stable in the sun a lot longer so that's a mix of chemical and physical screens brilliant for chasing kids around the pool excellent it just sticks well there's and that's what you need too yeah. if you're trying to get them and, on there you know 20 20 so you know you can get these at your supermarket these these couple of these awesome and and you're yeah. away. Hey, Trudy, thank you so much. Oh, it's bringing those in. Oh, it's lovely to For more um, from Trudy, you can head to her website, beautyeq.co.nz.